Good morning, everybody. My name is Ed Vasco. I'm the director for the Institute for Pervasive Cybersecurity at Boise State University. Uh, I'm a uh, longtime 30 year cybersecurity industry veteran. And about uh, June of 2020, I made the shift over to academia. I uh, wanted to uh, take on a new challenge. Uh, over my 30 year career, I've had a chance to start, run, and operate five different cybersecurity businesses. And uh, so today, I really am pleased because I'm here, joined here with Dan DeClos. He's the CEO co and founder, I should say, he's founder and CEO of PlexTrack based out of Boise. And welcome, Dan. Yeah, glad you're thanks. here. Yeah, glad to be here. Excited yeah. always for this week. It's fun, fun. I was going to say, it's, fun, it's old home that yeah, I learned, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you started yeah. out here. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So, you know, I'm really curious. Uh, give us some perspective, give the audience some standpoint of, of starting a business, especially in cybersecurity. It's so hot. It's such a phenomenal market, but what was it like starting it here in Boise? What were some of the advantages? What were some of the disadvantages? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think I think two things that are really you maybe not really unique, but things that I've I've found to be very helpful both in Boise and the cybersecurity industry are that they really do have a strong sense of community, right? Yep. And uh, while it's a bigger industry, you get if you've been in the space like like we have a long time, oh, yeah. you, you know a lot of people, and and everybody is is really for the most part interested in achieving the same mission. Yep. So when we talk about starting a cybersecurity company, you know, I was very blessed to have really good early adopters of the pro product and just people that are willing to give feedback, um, and being able to tap into my network at an early stage to really get validation as to what I'm trying to do and where the where I see the industry heading as a whole, and and so you know, getting some of that that early traction with just the network of people and, and friends of friends, right, yeah. you know, helps a lot. Yeah. So that was, that was one of the early things that, that I really was, I felt blessed with just having been in the space and built my network of friends that then turn into just valuable colleagues and peers for, for the product and the platform. And the same would be true of Boise. You know, I think we're in a, in a fun time where the community is continuing to grow as a tech hub and a tech scene. And so having mentors out of places like here where we're filming at Trailhead, you know, this is kind of where I started getting yeah. the whole idea formulated for Plex Track, and then just being able to tap into the to the environment and the community here was was very very good. So those were all great advantages that I felt I had catching some tailwinds of a lot of other things in the industry. Yes. Um, disadvantages, I you know I, I think there's there's not a whole lot I would say that are like a disadvantage. I think I think the exciting thing is that Boise is really be, being put on the map, right? In terms of like, hey, this is a, this is becoming a tech scene. This is becoming a startup scene. And, and a lot of investors are taking interest. You know, I would say maybe five years ago, kind of early on, early, early on, people were still kind of skeptical that you could build a company out of Boise, right? And, and would you find talent and things like that? And yep. I think the nice thing is we've really proven them wrong, you know, that, well, and especially in a, in a pandemic era, yeah. <laughs> you know, people are, people are, you know, moving in here, work, remote work is so, so, you know, easy now, right? So, so we really, you really, are not limited by some of those, you know, those early objections. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, you know, talent pipeline is certainly growing strong and advantage there from the, from the uh, general pandemic. Um, five years ago, probably would have been a little bit more difficult, but uh, we're taking full on advantage and you're just kicking it. It's yeah. great to see. It really is. Um, yeah. I know that, you, you know, you started here, uh, you know, your initial raise was with uh, stage stage dot O mm -hmm. Uh, and the great group out there. Um, you know, give us some perspective of that experience. What was that like for you know, early stage entrepreneurs? They've got an idea, they've bu they're building that idea, and they're getting ready to go in front of that first funder. What did that, what did that feel like? What did that, what you do? How, what sort of advice would you give? Yeah, you know, I think, well, so for one, I did a lot of the bootstrapping up front, which really helped. You know, I had done a lot of working with programs that were coming out of like Trailhead, you know, really helping to hone your model and, and how you were going to start, you know, produ producing your product and bringing it to market, I think definitely helps. So doing some of that homework up front is really important. Whether or not you've commercialized or built a product yet isn't as necessary. You know, I had already commercialized. I'd gotten some early customers. So that helps in those conversations with those early stage investors like Stage.O. Right. Uh, so so that, that's one thing is just at least knowing your homework, you know, knowing your numbers of like, how here's how I think the market looks. I've already validated with customers. Those kinds of things will always help. Um, at an early stage, really what in early stage investors, especially groups like Stage.O, they're looking for domain expertise, 
and and uh, an entrepreneur they can get behind right. right at the end of the day especially in those early stages and so that was that was really beneficial to me again uh, I was introduced to stage.o through other peers in my network and uh, they knew uh, that stage.o was planting a flag here in Boise yep. and so yep. uh, so when I met uh, with Mike and uh, Devin at stage.o uh, it, I was not it, it was not in a mode of, of pitching I was I was just saying hey I know I'm gonna want to raise money and so we really started off that just conversation, right? And I think that's another important thing with in, in the investor community, even if you're not raising money at the time, it's always good to start building those relationships. Yep. And so one thing that I noticed once I got the seed investment, you know, is that you start getting inundated just like anything else people are marketing to you and and even investors are marketing to you they want to get you in their database they want to they want to know and they want to start tracking you even yes. if you're not raising now or you're not going to be funding now it's still good to start developing those relationships and just kind of starting to get an eye on who's going to be a good partner right yeah. so with plex track we've always tried to focus on who are the right partners to have at the table and uh, and you know cuz money is green at the end of the day right yeah. and and you can you know what you're going to do with the money if you're going to go for investment. Um, so really, how, how can the investors be a, a help and a boon to your business and your, and your uh, strategy? Right. And so, I mean, you, if I think about your journey and this, this really phenomenal set of experiences that you've, you've been able to have, you know, concept, early stage, now you're moving into series A. And I mean, if, having been in the industry for a long, long time, what's been great to see is, is the, the level of investment, the level of interest, kind of bringing it all around to Boise and, and really uh, enabling that, that kind of next step for you. You know, kind of lean forward a little bit. Give, give the audience some perspective of what does that next set look like? You know, how much more stress? What do you see yourself having to, to, to take on that you didn't take on kind of day one. What does that look like now? Yeah, yeah. So early on, you know, you're you are the business. You're running everything. You're doing marketing, you're you're doing sales, you're doing customer success, you're building product. You at least that's how I was. You know, some people have co-founders that are, you know, that are taking on some of that. Um, yep. with the seed investment that really allowed us to to hire people and start having domain expertise in things like sales and marketing and those kinds of things. So as you as you continue to progress, you get some of that off of your plate, but then you're you're responsible for the strategy and the vision. Right. So, so each, each stage brings different set of challenges and, and growth opportunity, right. For yep. you as an entrepreneur. Yep. Uh, and so I would say, you know, we, we were able to close our series a back in April of 2021, a $10 million round. And it was a joint investment with stage.o Madrona venture partners and Nora Mosley partners. That's awesome. Uh, and so really exciting there, you know, the things that, that, uh, you know, you don't anticipate is like, oh, what, how, how deep of a diligence process this actually takes, you know, <laughs> and, and, and rightfully so, you know, when you're taking in $10 million, like they want to make sure that yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah. you're not just blowing smoke, right? Yep. That you do have a legitimate business and good market, um, go to market strategy and things like that. Yep. Um, so post series A, you know, we've been, uh, we've been hiring a lot, right? And things that, things that you, you, you you know you're gonna probably end up facing at some point in your in your journey, but then all of a sudden, man, okay, now this is real. Like, hey, we actually are hiring a lot of people, and we got to train and onboard these folks, and and how do we make sure that our 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 business model is aligning to what we were planning and forecasting to do? And so, really starting to get more focused on on the actual logistics of the numbers and the in the and and how we're how we're coming into the market and hitting our forecasts and things like that. Those are all things that you know everybody knows you're gonna are are gonna be the the main things you know because as you progress uh the investment you know the investment strategy changes a little bit obviously all investors are going to bring something different to the table at different stages and yep. so you're really looking for hey as we get to the as we start focusing on what we're going to do for a series b investment what are the types of partners we want to bring to the table there yep. what are the key leadership hires that we need to bring in and those kinds of things that's great that's great so think about the community and and i'll pivot back around to boise state uh, be a little biased. You know, what can we be doing? What can Boise State be doing? How are we how, how are we working together? What can we be doing better? How can we be enabling you and other entrepreneurs within the community towards success? 
Yeah. Well, and, and, and I mean, it was serendipitous to get introduced to you because I got introduced to you through a, through a, a mutual friend that's yep. another adjunct at, at, and didn't realize your background. And so I was like, oh, well, we're going we're gonna to exploit you as much as we can, <laughs> right? So your experience in the industry has been a huge help to us. But, but from the Boise State perspective, um, what we're excited about is just what your program is doing, right? And, and I love the approach of having a, a, a perspective on cybersecurity as a pervasive across industry, right? It's not, I'm a computer science major or an engineer, so therefore, um, I, I'm the only one that needs to know about cybersecurity. If I'm in business, if I'm in marketing, if I'm in uh, you know, customer success, uh, any, any kind of operational aspect to a normal business, they need to know about cybersecurity. Right. And, and you know, we have to all, as a, as, a, as a global industry, really rise that tide, right? And so I think that's one exciting thing that I know BSU specifically is, is helping with. Uh, and then for specifically for us, you know, being able to, to provide trained uh, you know, uh, entry-level employees is, is really going to help us as we continue to execute on our strategy and, and wanting to make an impact in the community as well. Sure. Right? And, and also continuing to value Validate that hey we will have a we'll have a talent pipeline that that will be sustainable for uh, for the long term here in the valley. Yeah, no, that's great. Uh, thank you, thank you. And we're certainly really really pleased with the partnership um, and whatever we can do to help you. Uh, you know, from my perspective, seeing the seeing PlexTrack is that kind of vanguard uh, company to really pull. The, the view of the of the nation towards Boise Boise and and what we're doing within the community I think it's you know no pressure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but you know certainly what what you're doing and what you're achieving here I think um, you know the the one of the one of my own personal goals is to make certain that somehow or another we find a way to clone you um, <laughs> you know and and just replicate the type of business and the the, the quality of business and the quality of focus that you have um, yeah I think uh, let me kind of just we're coming up on, on our kind of our end of our time. I'm curious, can you, if you were to kind of encapsulate maybe the top two, top three to five things that you would want to pass along, I mean, go back in time, you know, you've been a couple years now through this process, go back in time, send that tachyon pulse through time back to Dan day one. Yeah. The idea is there, the spark is there and you recognize that there's, there might be something here. What would be the top three to five things that you'd want to pass along to him now? Great question. I mean, and I think if, you know, one, thanks, thanks for the, you know, the comments. I, I would definitely say that I would not be here without the blessing that I've had of a, having a great team and a great just support system in general. So you can clone me and the team. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say, you know, if, you know, the, you know it, some of those cliche-ish things actually are true in terms of don't give up. Right. There were many nights, you know, I was doing nights and weekends for a long time, just yep. building this out and you know, starting to get a little discouraged at times. And but but really believing that, no, I, I we do have something that that is valuable for the you know, and we're mission oriented to begin with. Right. In cybersecurity, we want to make sure the world's a safer place. And I believed that this is actually something that's going to do that. And yep. so I didn't give up, right? And, and it's easy to do that. And it's easy to listen to all the naysayers. Uh, I think definitely continue to stay focused on what are you learning out of those conversations when people are skeptical, when people think you're not onto something. Okay, what is it, what is it that, you know, because you, you do talk to people that are really excited and, and will actually pay you money. So you know you have something, yeah. right? So what is it yeah. about the people that don't? Um, so those are some things that definitely always I continue to stay focused on is like, hey, uh, don't give up. Stay, stay, you know, stay strong in, 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 in your vision and uh, make sure you're learning from anything that you think it doesn't align with where you think you're headed as a company or, or a product because that helps, that helps adjust either messaging or you know, product roadmap, those kinds of things. Yep, yep. And then coming back to just building a great team, you know, yep. really focus on uh, I've been blessed to just have great people around me, both at the board level and in and you know in the company, right? And people that are skilled and have experience and and um, and and work well together. That's great. That's great. I think the I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you know, having done it a number of times, uh, that I always remind myself it's the intestinal fortitude and just sheer determination to continue refining and refining. So I, I, I love that. And the, the team building, I think, is, is critical, hypercritical. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. It's been a thank phenomenal you. conversation. I hope it's been helpful for everybody. Uh, and I hope you have a phenomenal 
rest of the Boise Entrepreneur Week, and we're looking forward to seeing some great, great growth and great phenomenal success out of PlexTrack, um, and uh, wish you all the best. Well, thank you. I yeah. appreciate you having me here. Yeah. That's fun. yeah. So again, my name is Ed Basco. I'm the director for the Institute for Pervasive Cybersecurity at Boise State University. Had the pleasure of talking to uh, Dan DeClos from uh, founder and CEO of PlexTrack. Uh, really look forward to um, being a part of the community and working with everybody who's interested in cyber. Um, coming up next, we've got the Cybersecurity Entrepreneur Challenge. Uh, that's been presented by Micron in Boise State. So you'll get a chance to see me again because we've been heavily involved in that. Uh, but first, I want to pass along a word from our sponsors.